Hey everyone, welcome to a new episode of Mount Dirklink. In today's episode, we're gonna destroy everything that's in the park because I hate it. I'm just kidding. Um, in today's episode, I want to make a powered coaster here. Uh, I want to build it along the cliff here. And it's not going to be a normal powered coaster. No, I want it to be a switchback coaster. So, uh, if you have seen the tutorial I made recently on uh, how to make any powered vehicle reverse, uh, well, that's also what we're going to do here. So, the powered coaster that I'm going to build, I'm going to put it in shuttle mode, then at some point in the track it will reverse, then it will do part of the track backwards, and at the end of the track I'll make it reverse again and uh, yeah, return back to the station. So the layout for the powered coaster that I want to make, I want to uh, make it start here somewhere on the, the cliff side. I want it to uh, go back and forth a few times on the cliff and then here uh, somewhere it reverses. And on the way backwards, uh, I want it to follow uh, approximately the same track as it did when it went upwards, but uh, yeah, backwards and on a lower uh, level. And that way I can also make it share some of the supports. Uh, I think it will look really cool. So yeah, I hope that it uh, works out. I also want to make maybe some uh, seating areas in between the tracks for some nice uh, interaction. Maybe a little restaurant inside the cliff face. So yeah, it, uh, I'm really excited to start uh, building on this. So uh, yeah, let's just uh, begin. Okay, I want to have a brake section in the track here. Well, the powered coaster normally doesn't allow for a brake section. So for that reason, we're just going to change it into a different ride type. Let's use the mine train coaster. I think this is also the track I will uh, eventually use. I don't really like the supports that the track generates, but uh, we can do something about that. Alright, the coaster seems to work nicely, you can see it go uh, forward here, here at the end section it will uh, reverse, maybe I will put a fake drag section here, just uh, to make it look a little bit nicer. Um, so yeah, now it goes uh, backwards again, uh, I think the first thing I will do now is uh, do the landscaping around the coaster, just uh, to see how that will uh, look. I think it will look nice with some uh, nice uh, cliff uh, faces here. Alright, now that most of the landscaping is done, it's uh, time to add some uh, custom supports to the track. Now I will start with the sections that are uh, directly above each other, because uh, I got some ideas for these uh, parts. <laughs> Thank you. 
Right here's a little trick you can use if you want to make a triangular support somewhere. So if you take a wooden coaster and you copy and paste this piece over here in one of those uh, diagonal, uh, well, yeah, those uh, diagonal sections. Uh, yeah, you can simply copy and paste this piece, and when you paste it somewhere, it will uh, simply uh, be there as a triangular support. So you can see that uh, over here. And then you can just move them up and down with uh, Tile Inspector. I think they look uh, great as, uh, as supports in general. I like them better than the standard uh, supports that the Mine Train gives in uh, diagonal sections. Now, they may be a little bit too beefy compared to the rest of the track, but uh, I think this looks alright. Alright, I think I did a nice job here on uh, the custom support. I've uh, done most except the end here, but uh, I want to make some uh, buildings around here, some scenery. So uh, I'll do that uh, later. But uh, so far I'm really happy with how all the custom supports look. It uh, really, uh, I think it really is convincing as an old uh, mine train track. And yeah, these supports, uh, they look a little bit fragile in place or a little bit messy. And uh, that's really uh, the look I was uh, going for. Okay, I'm going to continue a little bit more here on the supports. There are some spots that uh, I haven't done yet. And when uh, when that's done, I'm gonna make uh, some buildings around the switch tracks. And I'll probably also make a piece of uh, fake track on uh, both ends here. Just to make it look like the coaster is gonna fly off. Alright, the ride is really coming together now. I made this little building here at the end. I put some TNT in there, which is really only visible from one angle. But uh, I think it's a fun touch uh, to have there anyway. So yeah, um, after this building there's now this, uh, this uh, switchback section. So the coaster will partly travel up this uh, hill. I put some brakes here so it uh, slows down before it goes here. 
and then before the end it uh, returns and then uh, you can see it go backwards here inside the building and uh, split off to the other track and uh, here of course it does the backwards section now here I made a little uh, waterfall just to uh, have some contrast with uh, with some of the other areas I don't want it to all be uh, white here but I think this uh, th this uh, gives it a nice uh, touch I think this uh, this looks uh, pretty cool. So I like that it goes over the waterfall here and right in front uh, at at this spot. So uh, what I'm going to do now is uh, work on the station of the coaster and also I want to cover up this uh, switch track here as well. So it will just look like a bit of a longer station. Alright, I think this coaster is pretty much done. So uh, what I'm going to do now is uh, to simply work a bit on the surroundings. I'm just gonna put some trees around it, some uh, some plants, some snowmen, uh, that kind of stuff. Just to make it look a little bit more uh, finished. And then after that, probably that will, uh, that will already be the end of the episode. Alright, that was it for this episode. Uh, I hope you enjoyed watching me build and uh, for the rest of this episode uh, we will just follow this train as it does, uh, uh, yeah, as it does a lap of this uh, circuit. Alright, hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you again in the next one. See you later. <laughs>